What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Grateful Ducks College Football Podcast. I'm your host, Brew Han Luke. Today is Monday, January 8th, National Championship Monday, the final game of the season. Just going to be a short little uh, preview episode here, nothing long or extended like I was discussing last time. I uh, just want to get out here, do a little preview, some predictions and picks for the game, and then be on our way so you can enjoy a little uh, tailgate, however you want to do that for tonight's game. I know I'm excited. I love watching Michigan football. Having Washington in there for the final Pac-12 send-off is very appropriate, and we get to see these two teams again next year as they'll be conference foes and they play each other uh, during the season next year. So that will be very fun to see both teams from the national championship playing each other in the regular season in 2024. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and get to it with the preview. So Michigan is a favorite tonight. They are now currently at minus five. They opened at minus four, was at minus four and a half for a long time. And as of this production, it has now moved up to minus five, depending on where the betters are. It may move back down to four and a half, but for the time being, it is at minus five. The total of the game is at 56. That one also keeps hovering between 55, so 55 and a half out there. Uh, but the number that I've been seeing the most lately has been 56. It was starting to sit and settle in there at 56. Uh, some keys to the game. The biggest key, the one that everybody is most intrigued by and I'm really excited about, is the Michigan defense, which looked absolutely dominant in the Rose Bowl against Alabama, against this high-powered, electric, fast-paced Washington offense featuring one of the best players in the country, Heisman Trophy runner-up Michael Penix. Um, could potentially be a first-round pick in the NFL draft. Washington also, again, like I said in the last episode, has the best offensive line in the country that won the Joe Moore Award for best offensive line in the country. They also have Dylan Johnson, who left the semifinal game in the Sugar Bowl with a high ankle sprain. All indications are that he's playing and he's cleared to play. I'm not sure how effective he will be in this game. If he's helping, he's full goal. That's a big bonus for Washington. If he cannot be fully effective in the run game, Washington really needs him on the field still for the Michigan defense. When the Michigan comes and blitzes, Dylan Johnson needs to be on the field for those situations. He's been doing a phenomenal job of picking up blitzes and being an added, an extra blocker on the uh, front line when they're going uh, pass heavy. So that is a big key. If Dylan Johnson cannot effectively uh, be a good pass blocker, that could be problematic for Washington. Um, like I said, Michigan's defense has looked absolutely dominant. They are the number one rated defense in the country. They showed that against Alabama. The difference now is they are going up against a much better and a much more athletic and stronger offensive line than they did in the Rose Bowl. That being said, this defense has seen some pretty good offenses throughout the season going up against the Big Ten with Ohio State specifically. You had Kyle McCord, who is not on the same level as a Michael Penix. However, they did go up against a receiving core and a run game in Ohio State with Travion Henderson, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Emeka Igbukwa, who are just as talented as the run game and pass pass game as um, Washington's offense. They may they might not have showed it down the stretch there, but Michigan does have the experience against a very similar offense that Ohio State had going during the season. Uh, that will be the biggest story, is because that is the strength on strength for those two teams. Now let's switch over to the other side of the ball. When you have Michigan's offense versus Washington's defense, Washington's defense is the 
for a lack of a better term, they will be the weakest uh, positional group on the field out of the four groups between Washington's offense, Michigan's defense, Washington's defense, and Michigan's offense. Um, they've been improving in the secondary. However, their run game ranks 130th nationally against the run. That could be very problematic with a strong offensive line, which I was very impressed with how Michigan's offensive line performed without Zach Zinter now for two games. They had him, he was missed the Iowa game and he missed the Rose Bowl. And they've really seemed to be doing just fine without Zach Zinter there. And I was concerned that that would be a key loss for them. Um, Michigan does have a key playmaker here in Blake Corum. And this is where I think some things will come to a head, and this is where the game will be decided. Uh, Blake Corum decided to return this year after ending his season with an injury last year, and he came back just like Coach Harbaugh, J.J. McCarthy, everybody else deciding to return to finish the job because they knew their work was not yet done at Michigan. Uh, so talking about Blake Corum, this is actually my – Best bet for today. Not a Blake Corum anytime touchdown. Those are getting really juiced up like crazy. I love Blake Corum to score two plus touchdowns at plus 120. I got it earlier in the week. I was so confident. I still am very confident in this pick that I went and got it at plus 135 on like Wednesday or Thursday last week. It'll open at about 140 and 145. He has scored two plus touchdowns in six consecutive games and 10 out of 14 games this season. He has scored two plus touchdowns. Uh, speaking of Blake Corum and the Michigan offense, again, with that being the weakness for Washington, they should really take advantage of it and not have to do any like any explosive run plays, but they could just chunk it three to four yard runs at a time there. And then, Every now and then, you might have an explosive run here or there. Uh, Donovan Edwards, you'll see a lot of, I believe, as well. And you might see some more J.J. McCarthy on the run. Uh, he still has that in his in his plethora of skill sets that really has not been seen nearly as much towards the end of the season when he was battling some injury issues, which he is now healthy. Um, so the key, again, with this is Michigan offense – can slow things down. They don't have to play and try to keep up with the Washington offense. If Michigan could just keep doing chunk plays here and there and continue to attack and pound the ground game, that is how you keep Washington's offense from scoring because they won't be on the field. That that simple. Um, I also took Blake Corm to be the offensive MVP at plus 400. I think if Michigan's going to key in on the run game like I expect. I think he's going to have a big game with uh, the rushing attack and the two touchdowns. Uh, obviously, he doesn't have the best odds. You have J.J. McCarthy and Michael Penix ahead of him in uh, the sports books for offensive MVP. Take that for however you would like to think about making that pick. Um. Those are my biggest keys. I think that's going to be the X factor. Michigan was looking a little bit shaky on offense in the Rose Bowl. I think they're ready to clean that up. I also think they had a lot of miscues on special teams. They should have really beaten Alabama by two touchdowns, if not more. They kind of kept Alabama in the game, which is a very, very dangerous thing to do against a Nick Saban team. But they were able to still do what they needed to do to get the job done to make it into the championship game here. Uh, this has been something that Jim Harbaugh set out to do when he got hired at Michigan was to restore the history and the tradition of Michigan football. Uh, he didn't come here to just lose a national championship game and then potentially go to the NFL like all the reports are saying. Uh, he's not here to lose. Michigan's not here to lose. I think it will be close for most of the game. If you like Washington, as a dog, I think that's also a very good bet, and I would not hesitate to do that if you like that side. 
Uh, they are, they've been a dog three times this year. They are three and O straight up as a dog, as you, as they are 14 and O. Uh, so they're familiar with this. They were just an underdog in the semifinal to, uh, to Texas. So now they're once again, an underdog, the line for the Texas game, they were four and a half and they are also now at five. Like I said, opening up here. I also would not hesitate to take the under here with no with what I expect to be Michigan, like I said, uh, on, in the ground game, in the run game, trying to establish that. They'll be able to air it out. If they have success in the run game in the first half, I wouldn't be surprised to see J.J. McCarthy start to air it out a little bit more. Ultimately, my prediction for the game, who's got it better than us? Nobody. Michigan wins this game. I'm going to go with a final score of 31 to 21. So Michigan wins by 10, uh, just under the total. At, so that would be 52. And potentially, maybe there's a backdoor cover from Washington, but I think Michigan's going to win 31 to 21. And Jim Harbaugh rides off into the sunset that is the NFL. J.J. McCarthy has a decision to make after this game as well. Uh, it's st starting to seem like he might return to Michigan next year. Uh, he's going to have to evaluate his NFL draft stock. Michigan wins their first national championship since 1997. Everybody's partying in the streets in Ann Arbor. Everybody's celebrating. I'm really excited for this game. I've been more intrigued and excited about this national championship game than I have in previous years when they've been blowouts. I think in the last five years, uh, shout out to Cover 3 podcast when I was listening to them earlier this, this week with this stat. Over the last five years during the national championship game, the favored team has won by at least 12 points every game. I expect this to be a little bit closer. Like I said, that first half I think will be very close. Washington plus three and a half would be a good bet. Uh, but I think Michigan pulls away at the end of the day. And it's a party in Ann Arbor. So that's all I got for you today. I'll be back uh, sometime later this week, maybe early next week, just to do a national championship game recap and my way too early preseason top 10 for next year. Then moving forward from there, we'll do some NFL draft previews, any other breaking news that comes out about college football, whether it's Jim Harbaugh going to the NFL or maybe Lincoln Riley going to the NFL or any other college head coach going to take an NFL job. We'll discuss that as well as news breaks. Um, enjoy tonight. This is the final game of the season. This has been a hell of a year. I've enjoyed watching. I don't know how many games I've watched this year. I tuned in from, I don't know, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturdays as, as best as I could. And that's going to do it for today. Let's go blue. Peace.